Yeah. Our message today is scattered <clears throat> or spread throughout this liturgy on the theme reality of the resurrection. Reality of the resurrection. It comes from Daniel, the text that has just been read. Daniel chapter 12, verse 2 says, Many who have already died will live again. Some will enjoy eternal life, and some will suffer eternal disgrace. Dear friends, today we celebrate the resurrection of life, inaugurated by the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. The times and seasons and the circumstances under which we worship now have not permitted us to celebrate the full service of Easter. The full service of Easter starts sometime around 4 a.m. when the congregation assembles, at least for those who can remember at home, we celebrate what we call the Great Easter Vigil. And when we come together for the Great Easter e Vigil, the first thing we do is to remember that we are rising early so that we can proclaim the glorious resurrection of Christ. In that dark, we light a new fire. Actually, a fire is made somewhere in the vestry or just outside the vestry, specially prepared. And at that time, there is the right, the ceremony of lighting the, uh, the, the Easter fire. When we light the Easter fire, we, we then bless the fire. And in blessing the fire, songs, we sing songs. Now, we then take the candle. There is a special Easter candle which we, uh, we, 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 are, we have to use in procession. In fact, the churches, when they, we really have the set of the church sanctuary, you have a big candle that is called the Easter candle. At that time, the Easter candle has some um, holes which are made there and then there are, uh, there are smaller uh, 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 marks that are planted inside the candle. And so these are uh, planted there to form the cross, the cross that has been lying down from St. Good Friday until now. It's symbolized by, uh, uh, only, it's carried only during the procession on Easter morning, but the Easter candle goes before. We will put the mark of the cross, sometimes we put the, 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 the we mark it the, the year that we are, we are doing the celebration and we make the sign of the cross, mark the sign of the cross. And then the Easter candle is, uh, is, is also uh, lighted. And when it is, it is lit, we celebrate it by saying, may the light of Christ rising in glory dispel all the darkness of our hearts and minds. That marks the, the shows us when the candle now is carried in procession into the church, people, members of the worshiping con congregation light their, uh, their candles, some light from the Easter candle, and then they pass on it into the pew, into, through the pews. And everybody who was carrying a candle uh, lights the candle from that. Now, now, the Easter candle is taken in procession with the choir singing. And we make three stops. One stop, we say, Christ is the light. <clears throat> then the congregation answers, thanks be to God. Christ is the light. Thanks be to God. Christ is the light. Thanks, thanks be to God. God. Until we arrive at the, uh, the, 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 the Lord's table. And when we stand at the Lord's table, the uh, Easter candle still uh, held there. It's... Um, planted where it's supposed to be, near the baptismal front where baptism is going to take place that morning. And then 
we then proclaim the Easter. And the Easter proclamation is, I have tried to recreate it in a song, which uh, uh, Sister Helen Adjimvel will execute to the tune of God Reveals His Presence. Rejoice, heavenly powers, sing praise yes, of, of angels, exalt all creation, holy God. Also around God's high throne, Jesus Christ has risen. Sound the trumpet of our salvation. Oh, rejoice, all on earth. Christ the Lord has conquered. Let this place resound with joy. Rejoice, heavenly powers. Sing praise choirs of angels in shining splendor and bright radiance. Yes, in divine brightness, Christ has overcome that glory is on earth and all the world. Darkness has all vanished. Rejoice, Holy Spirit of God. Risen Savior shines the way. Rejoice, heavenly powers. Sing praise, choirs of angels. Exalt church of God's own people. The risen Savior has wash us clean of snow sin. God's glory shines upon all of us. All rejoice, praise the Lord. Let God's glory shine forth. Sing loud hallelujahs now. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and also you. with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift, we them, lift up them up to, to the, the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is, is right, right for, it us, is right to for us, so. us to do so. This indeed is the Easter invitation. An invitation for you to open your minds and celebrate Easter with your eyes open and with your heart clean. <coughs> it is truly right that with full hearts and minds and voices, we should praise the unseen God, all-powerful Father, and God's only Son our Lord Jesus Christ. Actually, and indeed, and in reality, Christ has ransomed us with his blood. Christ has paid for us the price of all our sin. Christ has paid this price to the eternal Father, the almighty God. This is our Passover. As we said about Holy Thursday, when Christ celebrated the last Passover with the disciples and promised that he will celebrate it anew only in the, in, the, in the coming kingdom. So Christ himself, by being sacrificed on the cross for us, is our Passover, is our Passover lamb, is our Passover meal. Christ is the one who has given his body and when pierced on the cross, his blood oozed out. This is summed up when we celebrate Holy Communion. We celebrate the sacrifice of Christ, our Passover lamb. 
So Easter then is our Passover feast. We celebrate a Passover feast when Christ, the true lamb, is slain, whose blood consecrated the homes of all believers and now is risen. This is the night, the night, this vigil, which we commemorate here, marks the night when we were first saved, when our parents were first saved, when Israel was freed from the, their slavery, and when the people of God were led through dry shot through the sea. That was a miracle. They could have been drowned in that sea, but they were led through to show and to foretell what was going to happen this night that we are celebrating the Easter. This vigil we are talking about, this vigil we are talking about is the night when the pillar of fire destroyed the darkness of sin. It happened to the children of Israel at the Exodus, but it symbolized what the prophets have said would happen. We are included in that story. And what has happened this night that Christ is risen, let it be in your face and in your mind, that pillar of fire that is lit in the darkness, symbolized by the Easter candle, which I said is usually carried in procession from the lit fire through the church up to the Lord's table and planted near the place where baptism is going to take place in order to show that those who are baptized are baptized from the darkness of their sin to the light of Jesus Christ, the light that is shining at Easter. That is why we wear white at Easter. That's why the Easter season, the color of Easter season is white to reflect the light of Christ. And that's why most of our uniforms contain a patch of, of white, especially CYF and CWF. The tops. This vigil night, this Easter morning, is the night when Christians everywhere wash clean of sin and freed from all their defilement are restored to grace. Restored to grace to grow together. It's a Easter. It's in addition to the inauguration of Holy Communion as a sacrament. Easter is the inauguration of congregational life, the life of God's people to live together, united by the resurrection of Christ. Christ, when he was uh, crucified on Friday, said, I will bring all people to myself. Now at Easter, those who believe that Christ died for their sins come together and form congregations the congregations that are led by the prophets, the preachers, and the pastors who are called and specially given, demanded to lead the congregations at worship. This is the night when Jesus Christ broke the chains of death and rose triumphantly from the grave. Now, when we say they broke the chains of death, it rings a bell to those who are still mourning their death. It tells the people who are grieved because they have lost a loved one. And many of us, none of us has been spared this season. Many of us have been bereaved doubly. Some people die too at the same time, like a husband and wife, sisters, sisters in two cases. In this night, as we remember Christ rising from the dead. Wipe your tears. Because those who mourn today, you will see them in heaven. Daniel has told us that on the day of resurrection, which is not greater by Christ rising from the dead today, all will rise. Those who have died will rise. And there will be two groups of people who will rise. 
one group of people will be those who believed in the Son of God. They are those who will have spent their time telling people about God's righteousness. Are the people who have spent their time studying Holy Scripture and picking out from there what it means to be good. Doing the things that God demands. Observing laws of morality and practicing integrity by being people who represent God to other people. In their charity work, in their prayers, in their visit to the sick, in their visit to the prisoners, in their generosity to strangers, in their kindness to neighbors. These are people who have understood what God wants. Because God is good, God wants all the followers, all the believers to be good. This night, Jesus Christ inaugurates that resurrection. And this group of people, when they rise, they will go into eternal life. They will spend their eternal life in heaven, where the angels and the saints spend time glorifying God. Now the other group of people will also rise. They too will rise from the dead and they too will go to, to eternity, eternal eternity. But the eternity they will go to will be the eternity of hell. Hell, the word rings a bell. Hell tells us what it is when you put your finger in fire. Hell tells us when you pour cold water over your, your, somebody. Hell is where they will spend their time because they did not heed the word of God because they did not believe in the Son of God, because they spend their time manufacturing wickedness and promoting evil, telling lies about other people, gossiping about other people, trying to, broke, to break down the church of God and trying to destroy whole communities by their gossip and by their, their, their blackmail. These are the people who did not follow the moral laws of God, who did not follow the law of love, where Christ says, love neighbor, love God, love neighbor, love yourself. These people will spend their time in eternal damnation. Now, Christ has come to inaugurate this Easter night. What good would life be to us had Christ not come as our Redeemer, it will mean that we are all condemned and we will stay in condemnation till the end. Thank goodness, this night we celebrate the resurrection of Christ and Christ has come to save us, to give us the word of comfort, to give us the word of consolation and to make us to be those who can bring the word of consolation to Christ. Isn't it a good thing to rejoice? Yes, it is. And therefore, we must sing our songs of resurrection, celebrating the resurrection of Christ. And the psalm, which we said at the beginning, is presented here now in song. Psalm 18, Easter psalm. The Lord is our strength and a song and is our salvation. Have glad songs of victory we sing in tents of the righteous. The Lord's right hand does valiantly, God has overcome death. Hallelujah, this is the day that the Lord God has made. We shall not die, but we shall live and recount deeds of God. Saviorly God does punish us, but gives us not to death. Open the gates of righteousness that we may enter through. 
Through this get the righteous enter and give thanks to the Lord. We thank you, Lord, you answered us. You are our salvation. The stone the builders rejected has become cornerstone. What God has done is marvelous, hooray, hallelujah. This is the day Lord has made. Let us gladly rejoice. Amen. Jerusalem, the world's spiritual center, is a light and alive this first day after the Passover. The news in Jerusalem says it all. God has lifted the gloom that befell the world since midday last Passover Friday. Jesus was crucified. Jesus, who was dead, who was buried, has resurrected from the dead. It has happened as Jesus predicted. As Jonah was in the belly of the fish for three days, so has it happened that Master Jesus is resurrected on the third day of his death on the cross. That is the Sunday greetings which the church has inherited from the people in Jerusalem. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Because he is not here. The tomb is empty. Mary Magdalene, the angel, the other women, all involved in the story. Peter, John, all involved in the Easter story. The resurrection of Jesus Christ is real. We often contemplate our belief in the resurrection. Now, we believe Jesus' teaching and preaching and promise that death is not the end of living for anyone. First, we have many important reasons to preach and teach Jesus' resurrection to people far and near. We must, we have, we have incorporated it in our creed when we say the third day he rose again from the dead. How do we substantiate this? The reality of the resurrection. First, Jesus told us he would rise from the dead and he has. We believe that he will keep every other promise he ever made. I, don't, I can't remind you of all the things that Jesus has said. The Beatitudes in Matthew chapter 5 the teaching of the Sermon on the Mount, and the miracles that he worked, and the parables that he told, and the open university he conducted throughout the Holy Week. There you will find that every speech, every talk, Jesus made a promise. And all the promises lead to the fact that because of Jesus, we have become the children of God. We have been incorporated to inherit the kingdom of eternal life, life in heaven. Jesus announced that God's reign was at hand and his rising from the dead ensured that God's eternal reign will be ruled by the anointed and the living. God's reign is not just a concept. It is not just a dream. It is in God's plan. And we can see signs of God's reign because when we come to church, no matter what, we, what opinion we have about the church, the church symbolizes the community of God's people where God reigns. And that's why in the constitution of the church, it is said that the church is independent of any other institutions and, and can take its own decisions. And all the constitution of the church, the liturgy of the church, the finance order of the church, and the, 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 the book of orders are all based on the word of God. The word of God guides the church. And so the church is a place where 
Jesus Christ has left Max and the church commemorates every word of the words that Jesus taught. The resurrection of Jesus Christ is a blessed assurance, a blessed assurance that we shall also rise from the dead. We all shall as well resurrect. This is a consoling good news, as Daniel says, for those who mourn their dead. We shall meet them again face to face. Easter is good time to remember our faithful departed loved ones. In fact, in the congregations where the full liturgy of the church is celebrated, after we have held the vigil in the morning and done baptism, we go out to the graves, to the burial ground, and proclaim the message of the resurrection to the dead. And this is a good day. I have suggested over the years that instead of only waiting that individual families should organize memorial services, the church can hold, organize a general memorial service on Easter day where we remember all those who have died within the year. And where we have time, we should collect the names of those who have died. And I, I would say, if the members of the congregation can send in the names, we shall be able to establish even a list of those who have died, uh, those who, who have been prayed for, and those whose memorials we have held here, and those who are related to members of the congregation. Easter is the time to remember all our dead to commit them to the Lord who has risen from the dead and to pray that they too be counted among the saints, among the righteous who are to have eternal life in heaven, not in hell. The resurrection is real. God's power to resurrect is available to believers. God desires to revive our dead morality and spirituality even believers who have backslided, even those who have abandoned the church for years, even those who think that God it does not exist. The resurrection proves that anything that is dead can be revived. And so the resurrection is time to proclaim the revival, to proclaim the message of revival and tell people that there is a God in heaven who lives and wants them to believe in that God and to celebrate that God. Knowing this helps us to stand above being drowned. We will stand above character assassination. Even if people assassinate your character, you will know that with the Lord Jesus Christ, you will stand above that. We will stand above gossip. We will stand above blackmail and we will stand above backstabbing because the power of the resurrected Lord is available to believers. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and whatever attempts to destroy you, just like Pilate and, and those who crucified Jesus tried, they thought they were killing him and destroying him forever, but he rose again. So you cannot by any means be destroyed because you are a child of God and you will inherit the kingdom of God with Jesus. Just like new plants sprout currently, Easter is a time for renewal of our lives, our attitudes, our beliefs, and our conscience. We can so change and grow in spirit and in truth. Jesus' sacrifice confirms God's love, confirms that God loves us and God forgives us all our sins. And when God forgives, God restores us to the life of the community of God's people. So come back, join the throng of those who celebrate this resurrection. We who have followed the teachings of Jesus bear witness to the world. We speak not of one who was just a good teacher, but of the one who is the way, the truth, and the resurrected life, Jesus Christ, the Christ of God. Jesus Christ has broken the chains of death and risen from the grave. The light of Christ rising in glory dispels darkness from our hearts, from our minds. And why not give us 
a spirit of light, to take things lightly, to ignore any things that will destroy us, will keep us back, and go on to celebrate the glorious resurrection of Christ. Christians everywhere are washed clean of sin, freed from defilement, restored to grace, and charged to grow together in holiness and righteousness. Are you one? Do you believe what I've just said? The reality of the resurrection is applied to you. Take it. Follow it. Join the throng of those who glorify God for the sake of Jesus Christ, the risen Lord, the risen Lamb, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. Amen.